Hey, this is Mr. Coker with Foundations of Algebra Lesson 2-2, Adding Fractions. To begin with, I want to remind you that when we're talking about fractions, the number on top is called the numerator, and the number on bottom is called the denominator. So, when we are adding, and I'm going to start with this example, 1 over 2 plus 2 over 2. In this example, we have two numbers that can be added because they have a common denominator, meaning the denominator is the same. In this example, we multiply or add, I should say, straight across. 1 plus 2 over not 2 plus 2, but just 2. Once we have a common denominator, we do not change it. So in this example, our numerator will change and our denominator will not. 1 plus 2 is 3, and the denominator is already common between both fractions. Therefore, it stays the same. So now it will be a 2, and our answer is going to be 3 over 2. Now that's a pretty easy one because it has a common denominator. So if we do not have a common denominator, as is, is the case in this example, we have to create one. So this example is 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3. We have a, a denominator of 2 and we also have a denominator of 3. They're being added together. The problem is that these fractions, because the denominators are different, are measuring different sizes. So I put this example, excuse my rough drawing here, but here's one half. We have two parts, that's the denominator, one, two, and one shaded part, that's the numerator, one. So this is one half, and this, we have three total parts, and two shaded parts, which makes two thirds. As you can see, the parts that are being compared are different sizes. That's why we need a common denominator, so that we are adding and comparing the same sizes. Um, in order to find a common denominator, the first thing we want to do is look at our two numbers. And a trick that will always work is to multiply both numbers together. So, 1 over 2 and 2 over 3, one do not, our first denominator is 2 and our second denominator is 3. We can multiply those together. I'm going to rewrite the problem with a, with a new denominator. 2 times 3 I'm going to put under both uh, as both denominators. We'll simplify that in a moment. If any time that we change a denominator, we can do that as long as we do the same thing to the numerator, and it creates what we call an equivalent fraction. So, if I'm going to multiply, um, and I'm, let's ignore the second fraction for the moment, for 1 over 2, if we multiply the denominator by 3, we can create, create an equivalent fraction by also multiplying the numerator by 3. And now let's ignore the first fraction, so go one fraction at a time. 
if on the second fraction we're multiplying the denominator now by 2, which is okay as long as we multiply the numerator by 2. So to create our, our common denominator, we are multiplying the two denominators together. And then for each fraction, we're doing the same thing to the numerator that we did to the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this problem simplified. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3, of course, is still 6. Now we have a common denominator, and hopefully you can see that this problem is now a lot easier. 3 plus 4, the two numerators are added together, 3 plus 4 is 7, and remember that the denominators stay the same once they're common. We've created a common denominator, so now it can stay the same. And our final answer is 7 sixths, or 7 over 6. Because now we have a denominator for each one that is the same, and therefore we can add. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.